Hi, I am Dr. Rahul Pandit, Senior Consultant and Head Intensive Care Unit at Fortis Hospital, Mulun, Mumbai. So, intensive care is a very young specialty. It has uh, been emerging in the last 25 years in the world. However, in India, the specialty is really picked up in the, in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, it deals with the most acute form of medicine which is practiced when the patients are at their sickest. And we provide them with organ support. Uh, which nowhere else in the hospital is provided on an acute basis as well as patients who are chronically ill. So what we do for them is we actually look after their failing organs, give them support until we find out what is wrong with the patient and treat the primary problem so that patients recover. This has been the one of the single most important step in healthcare which has happened in the world where we've been able to support failing organs for a long time till we find out what was wrong. So this is the uniqueness of intensive care. It's a 24-7 job. It requires the same amount of intensity in monitoring as well as looking after what it would be requiring for a patient when he's sick. So as I said, intensive care is an emerging specialty and India has sort of caught up a little bit late in, um, in that. Uh, we have the Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine which formed up in 1993. Uh, from there on, the specialty has steadily grown. There was no formal training uh, offered by any of the universities. So Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine started doing training from 1995 onwards. The Medical Council of India has now recognized intensive care as a super specialty from uh, 2012 onwards. And there are at least four or five universities and um, hospitals now which offer DM in critical care medicine. However, if you look at it, we are still around 5,000 to 6,000 intensive care specialists short in the country. So we need to uh, still improve our training and we need to still have more people uh, join the specialty. It's huge. I mean, the technology is a part and parcel of intensive care unit. Right from the 24-7 monitoring, which happens on a monitor to the ventilators, we have a very, very highly sophisticated equipment which have come out for organ support. For example, ECMO, which is an extracorporeal membrane oxygenator, where we literally have an artificial lung and artificial heart support the patient from outside um, for several days till the heart or the lung, which is the primary problem, starts to recover. Uh, we have uh, multiple um, uh, diagnostic tools like bedside ultrasounds. The machines are getting smaller and smaller. Uh, we have a lot of monitoring tools which can be sort of inserted into the patient and we can have accurate numbers right from the pressures of the brain to the pressures of the heart to the pressures in the abdomen and then modify or, or start treatment accordingly. I think the technology is huge and it is advancing as days go by. What is emerging now is actually technology which will help us monitor patients in a non-invasive way. So rather than putting uh, uh, devices in the patient, we are now attaching devices to the patient's skin and getting the same amount of information what we were getting before. So one of the example is um, when we breathe out and when we breathe in, there are two different processes which happen. We breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. So both are important. Okay, just not just oxygen, but breathing out carbon dioxide is very important as well. Previously, we used to have uh, things attached to the patient's tube. Nowadays, we can just attach a probe to the patient's skin and we can get the same information. Similarly, we can attach a probe to the patient's finger and we can get an oxygen content of the patient. So these are some of the technological advances which have come out. Rather than putting in devices and looking at the pressures which of the heart, nowadays we are able to do the same sort of information with bedside um, ultrasound. So we can do an echo of the heart and get the same information about the pressures what we were previously doing by placing catheters into the big veins and arteries of the patient. So intensive care is um, uh, one of the specialties probably after oncology where the research is going on. If you look at the PubMed which is the largest um, collection of uh, index journals which, which gets published every which gets updated every day. Uh, intensive care is the second specialty after oncology, uh, which has got a number of publications which come out. So the research is emerging and the research is actually helping us in to understand physiology a lot more. One thing about research is that what we were practicing 10 or 15 years ago, most of, uh, most of it has been actually now abandoned or modified. So research is actually improving our way the way we were practicing. And I think the same is going to happen in future. You would see that what we are practicing today probably in 10 years time we would be doing something completely different. Obviously there are some things which we say that 
it keeps coming back to us like the history repeats itself and it comes in a 20 25 year old cycle we may have few things which we may adopt from what we were doing previously but majority of things are going to change so new specialty new challenges uh, biggest challenge is that because we look after the patients when they are the most critical and primarily we look after the patients of other specialties who sort of come and put their patients under our care while the patient is in intensive care the biggest challenge is to gain their confidence that we'll be able to do that for them and the second biggest challenge is to keep on communicating so that there's an open discussion all the time and the loop is closed all the time because the family suddenly has been introduced to two doctors one is the primary doctor say for example a cardiologist who was looking after the patient and now the intensive care specialist who is equally looking after the failing organs so many times uh, this is one of the challenge the second challenge uh, which i feel is cost okay so the cost is going to be um, is something which we'll have to work out over a period of time but india has been doing exemplary well in co in cost management though if you look at the per capita our cost may be a little bit high but if you compare it with the countries which are doing well for example us or uk or australia we do it for a fraction of a cost a bed in us or australia would cost upwards of three thousand dollars a day here we are able to do it less than 30 40 thousands a day thousand rupees a day i think the future is bright next 15 to 20 years is for intensive care intensive care will mature and establish like a specialty just like anesthesia branched out out of surgery and is now an established specialty intensive care will branch out completely and will basically be now identified as a specialty. Right now, there's a bit of mix, mix and match. We have physicians, cardiologists, anesthetists, everybody calling themselves as an intensive care specialist. And rightly so, because they have been practicing it for such a long time. I think it will come to a point where they will be practicing only one specialty, which will be intensive care. That's where I see the future going. Thank you very much.